Hello everyone, my name is Felix Vygotsky, and today I'm going to be talking about black holes. After this presentation, you will be able to name the life cycle of a star, and how it turns into a black hole, and what a black hole actually is. Alright, so first we're going to start off with the life cycle of a star. Now, stars like our sun go through this life cycle right here, the top one, where it goes from an average star to a red giant, to a planetary nebula where it shaves off all of the star stuff and becomes a white dwarf. However, that's not the only life cycle that stars can have, depending on their size. So right here, a massive star goes into a red supergiant, which eventually explodes in a supernova, and it can either become a neutron star, or if the star was massive enough, then it becomes a black hole. Now, what are black holes? Black holes are the endpoints of stellar evolution for very massive stars. And essentially, they're objects where the escape velocity exceeds the speed of light. And black holes are not wormholes. Now, contrary to science fiction, you know, like all the theories, they don't provide shortcuts between different points in space or portals to other dimensions or universes. They're also not cosmic vacuum cleaners. So just like any object, black holes don't suck in other matter. From far enough away, their gravitational effects are just like those of other objects of the same mass. Alright, so this is the black hole. These are galaxies, and this is the universe. Black holes are a core part of our universe. So delving deeper into the topic of escape velocity, so on the surface of the Earth, the faster you throw something upwards, the higher it goes before coming down. But if you throw something up at 25,000 miles per hour, or around 7 miles per second or more, it can leave the Earth's gravitational pull entirely and travel freely into space. This speed is what's known as the escape velocity, and objects with a stronger gravitational pull than Earth, so objects with this number right here, miles per hour, will have a larger escape velocity than the Earth, and will thus be able to leave Earth. Now, black, a black hole is an object with such strong gravity that the escape velocity is at or greater than the speed of light. And since light cannot escape, black holes don't absorb any light, so they appear black. And since nothing can travel faster than light, nothing can escape from a black hole. Now, here are some facts about black holes. The nearest known black hole, called 1A062200, is 3,000 light years away. Now, the farthest black hole is at the center of a galaxy called QSOJ013. I'm not going to say the number, but you can read it right here. And it's around 13 billion light years away. All right. Now, the biggest black hole. The biggest black hole that we've ever seen, which is called TON618 is 66 billion times the sun's mass. And the smallest black hole is only 3.8 times the sun's mass. It's paired up with the star. And number five, spaghettification. It's a real term which is used to describe what happens when matter, like you and I, or like a spaceship, gets too close to a black hole. It's squeezed horizontally and stretched vertically, resembling a noodle. Number six, spin. All black holes spin. The fastest known, named GRS, this number, clocks in at over 1,000 rotations per second. Particle accelerators and monster black holes at the centers of galaxies are, can also launch particles to near light speed. So you can imagine how that would feel. Number 8. Gravity is the same. If you replaced the sun with a black hole of the same mass, the solar system would get colder, but the planets would stay in their orbit. And the reason for that is because even though black holes are black holes, they if they have the same mass of the sun, then they're going to have the same gravity. So, And number nine, star booms. One type of black hole is born when massive stars run out of fuel and explode in a supernovae, which we covered a couple of slides ago. And then we have the other type of black holes. So most Milky Way-sized galaxies have giant black holes at their centers. 
Ours is called Sagittarius A, and it's four million times the, the sun's mass. Now, finding black holes. Black holes don't emit or reflect light, making them effectively invisible to telescopes. Scientists primarily detect and study them based on how they affect their surroundings. Black holes can be surrounded by rings of gas and dust, called accretion disks, that emit light across many wavelengths, including X-rays. A supermassive black hole's intense gravity can cause stars to orbit around it a particular way. Astronomers track the orbits of several stars near the center of the Milky Way to prove that it houses a supermassive black hole, a discovery that won the 2020 Nobel Prize. Now, there are two types of black holes, as I mentioned earlier. These black holes, which we talked about a couple of slides ago, you already know how they form. From a supernova, a giant star, they turn into a black hole. However, this other type of black hole, which is found at the centers of galaxies, we actually don't know how they formed because they're incredibly massive. Like, they're a lot more massive than our sun and all known stars, so we don't really know how that happened. And now here's the structure of a black hole. So, outside of the black hole, objects can avoid falling in. However, there is an event horizon around the black hole, and it, that's the boundary. Once you get, once you go past the event horizon, you can't get out. Any object can't get out, not even light. And it all goes down into this place called a space-time singularity, which is an infinitely dense point where there is no volume and infinite mass, essentially. My name was Felix Rogotsky, and this was a presentation on black holes. I'm going to see you all in the next video.